How about a 2024 prediction, Mike? What do you have for us? Okay, so this one's interesting. It is 2024 prediction, but it's also kind of 2026. So it's for Davis Andrews, who we've talked about, Darren, from American Fork, Utah, three-star across the board. I think this kid's very underrated. I, I love this kid's game. So I did log the prediction, and long story short, he is taking a Mormon mission trip. He graduates from high school in December, and then he's taking a two-year trip. So he would be, what, 19, 20 years old, and then when he's done with that trip, at that point, he would come back to Notre Dame as a, you know, again, 19 or 20 year old true freshman. So pretty interesting. Um, like Kahanu Kia is coming back after doing his two year mission. And as far as I'm told, he's actually going to return to Notre Dame. It's kind of the downside with this. Like if, or when the kids come back from the mission trip, they're basically a high school recruit again. Like they can go anywhere they want. Um, so that's a little bit of the downside, but the upside being you're getting a, you know, 19 or 20 year old kid with four years of eligibility. Like that's, that's you're, I mean, that's, you're more developed as a human, right? Like at that yeah. age. So um, it's kind of like a, a win-win scenario for Notre Dame. Like you really, you know, there's not a whole lot of loss here. So I did log the prediction, you know, he wouldn't count towards Notre Dame's 2024 class numbers he count towards 2026 actually. Um, so yeah, and I do, from talking to sources, I do gather that Notre Dame is the team to beat here. Um, it's either Notre Dame or, or, or Utah. Um, so, at least from what I gather. But one ahead long to prediction. It could happen this summer. That verbal commitment might happen into the fall. But I, I think, regardless, I think Davis Andrews ends up at Notre Dame. And he's locked in as a safety prospect? Yes, yeah. Okay. You know, he's interesting. He's a he's pretty big kid. I, I could see him playing Rover. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Notre Dame recruiting him as a safety. Mike Singer, Notre Dame football recruiting insider, Blue and Gold Illustrated, blueandgold.com. So between now and signing day in December, I want to ask you about the Notre Dame coaching staff and who has the biggest assignment, maybe the most to do, most babysitting. You can kind of take this whatever direction you want to go. So let's go offense and defense. Let's begin on the offensive side of the football, Mike. Which of the Notre Dame assistants do you feel like has the biggest assignment between now and signing day in December? So, okay, from a recruiting perspective, right? Yes. That's what we're... <sighs> Offense has got to be Gadouli or, um, well, I mean, I guess you could throw in Jared Parker because, like, hey, he's the offensive coordinator. Like, you got to show your chops as a recruiter. Um, but I would still probably le lean Gaduli. Like, show me what you got at this quarter. But you inherited CJ Carr, and you said between now and signing day, day, right? Correct. I would say, yeah, it's Gaduli because it's either, hey, are you? And I'm looking at that 2025 class, though. It's not Absolutely. even about 2024. Can you land one of these top guys in 2025? Can you get Deuce Knight? Because that 2025 board really looks like Deuce Knight. There's a kid, Bear Bachermeyer from, um, uh, from Southern California who, who you know, Gaduli really likes, but hasn't formally offered yet. Like show me your chops there or it's Joe Rudolph. Um, you know, if Notre Dame lands Gerby Lambert, like kudos to, to Joe Rudolph, but honestly, it's kind of Notre Dame's recruiting a bit of it. I don't want to take anything away from Rudolph, but I think that Notre Dame is recruiting itself for Gerby Lambert. Like it's much more about the fit than any coach. Um, so I would probably lean though. And I'm looking at these two guys to show me what you can do for not only finishing up 2024 for, for Rudolph, but what you can do for 2025. So I guess I'll go Rudolph um, to give you an actual answer. And then defense, I would say just because the, the, the heat that this guy gets on the interwebs is, is out <laughs> Washington. Um, can you go flip Justin Scott from my state? Can you get him back on campus? I think of, like if, if Scott does visit Notre Dame again, I think Irish fans will be fired up. Just be like, all right, you're, you're still fighting for us. You know, even if Notre Dame doesn't even flip them, I, I still think there would be like a, all right, you're one of us. Like you're, you're not giving up here. At least that's, that's what I, that's how I would feel from a Notre Dame perspective. Um, 
I, I you could th- definitely make an argument, Darren, for Al Golden, the Rams defense coordinator. He's another guy who uh, the two Al's just getting heat um, for their recruiting efforts. But I would still say Al Washington, pretty good defensive line class. Cole Mullins, I was talking to a source today. Notre Dame loves Cole Mullins, that you know this uh, you know the kind of freak athlete uh, defensive lineman linebacker at the high school level. Notre Dame recruitment as a Viper. Um, from the Atlanta area. Yeah, Notre Dame loves him, thinks he's going to be an absolute freak show and shoot up the rankings. He's a three-star across the board, but again, Notre Dame sources think he's going to skyrocket. But uh, So again, it's it's a pretty good defensive line class, but for all of just the, the heat that Al Washington gets, like what can you still do in 2024 and then get off to a, a good start in 2025? I already have Davion Dixon committed a, a beefy interior defensive lineman, but other schools are still recruiting him. Can you hold on to him? What else can you do in 2025? And, and can you maybe even flip Justin Scott? So all eyes on Al Washington. Mike, it's one of those situations. It's not Al Washington's job to make the fans happy. Although when you get the big fish, the fans are happy in an indirect way, of course, but his job is to put together the best class possible. So it almost feels like, yes, he can, make the class better or the 25 class even better. But this is almost more about perception right now to try to get the fan base to turn their thoughts on the possibilities that he can get that elite talent. You know where I'm going with that? Yeah. Well, what was even the original question though? Which guy had the biggest assignment on the defensive side of the football between now and signing day? Yeah, so I mean, we're just looking for content, right? I mean, it's not like Al Washington's. Re- Maybe he is, but I, I don't think he's just scrolling through his tweet, you know, his Twitter notifications <laughs> and being like, "Oh man, I gotta do really well because of the, no. the 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 backlash," you know. So, yeah, I mean, for for the sake of content, it's Al Washington. But I, I mean, people ask me like, "Hey, do you think he's on the, you know, the the hot seat?" I'm like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. He could be. For all I mean. But I mean, it, it's it's just we're it's this is off season fodder, you know. This is a fourth oh. topic to wrap it up. And this is it's a, a good, it's a good analogy. question. What's go, that? Go I said it's it, you know, it, it's it's good it's good fodder. Yeah, it's it's a good discussion. But um, I mean, you could really argue any of the guys. I mean, I can make an argument for any of the coaches on the staff for why they have the biggest assignment, you know. Oh, yeah. But um. Well, this is a horrible analogy, but I'm thinking with the way you describe the class Al's put together in this upcoming cycle, they've got some Mercedes Benzes, but uh, the fan base is looking for the Ferrari and the Lamborghini, basically. See where we're going there? I mean, it's a good I mean, all the positions. It's all the positions. I mean, but Al Washington just gets the most heat. There's just always, Darren, there's always that one coach. You know, it's been Adele Alexander. It's been Jeff Quinn. It's... It's always one of the coaches and justified or not, you know, like I think a lot of the heat that Dell Alexander got was justified. I always liked Dell Alexander. I thought he, he worked hard. He just didn't succeed as a recruiter. The, uh, the res- he had, I mean, that 2022 class before those decommitments, CJ, uh, CJ Williams and Marion Walker. Um, and, and obviously to buy some, I mean, that was a fantastic, but I, I think if he signs those three guys, he's still at Notre Dame. Um, but he doesn't, you know, and it doesn't work out and he, and he gets let go, you know, Jeff Quinn recruited Blake Fisher and Joe. All. I, so, I mean, there's some, you know, sometimes it's, it's warranted. Sometimes it's not. Um, yeah. And, and this, this year it's, it's out Washington. And, and I think to a slightly lesser extent, it's, it's out golden as well.